two pandemics in Japan. One, coronavirus. And two, the amount of disgusting incel white men trying to pick up Japanese women. You goddamn right they're poor. I don't give a damn if she comes from a favela, a barrio, wherever you call it in Colombia, they little hoods built alongside the mountains. As long as she's pretty, submissive, and in the arms of the angel. <laughs> this passport bro stuff, a lot of them are predatory in nature, yo. They just going overseas like they going to like an animal shelter and just like finding a like abandoned pup or something that they could just like clean it up and then it just obeys them you know what i'm saying sit stand let, let. like this is crazy y'all it's predatory it's crazy welcome to the tip network where we help you level of self-improvement and sprinkle sprinkle sarcasm so look i'm a little confused all right all right because we have so a, what are you confused about we have a lady okay who she says that there's two pandemics in japan and one of them are apparent uh, obviously men that she's not interested in. Mm -hmm. because she was interested in the men she wouldn't call them incel like losers yeah yeah so she is in japan too right she's in japan and right. she said there's two so she's not interested in it so she sees men in japan trying to pick up on japanese women white men mm -hmm. trying to pick up a japanese woman and then we have this other guy el brujo uh -huh. who uh he's talking about austin hollerman and saying that he's actually a predator, a predator of some sort. because he wants a woman like in a way, That's he, more traditional yeah, feminine back yeah. in the forties, thirties, right. what, like whatever, that. whatever says, time says, said, it is. And basically, what he said, and, and like I, I want everyone to just pay attention to this. When you hear submission, just think cooperative, because mm -hmm. that's what people really want—cooperation, right? And so, what, so what he so said. So I guess we're gonna have to work on the delivery uh, and the per, proper vernacular. It's since not even, it seems like everyone gets so sensitive, especially women. Well, well but, but, but we have a guy. Uh -huh. Sitting yeah, here, yeah, yeah. he's he's a true woman's advocate. Yeah, right yeah. There. We have a guy Put shame, me to shame. shaming him. First of all, he's he's singing uh, uh -huh. uh, for no singing. Sarah McLaughlin and Backstreet Boys. <laughs> so, like, uh, my guy, <laughs> shut your face. Okay, but uh -huh. besides that, what he says is absolutely, absolutely just untrue, and he char he's characterizing people. Obviously, that he doesn't know because he says, mm -hmm. "Oh, you're just gonna go and pick this person off the shelf and make him do what you want." This, that, that, and this. Oh my God, it's it's just sarcasm and it's shaming language, right? And but then what's really funny is that when you look at the last video, you see women really just saying openly, mm -hmm. you know. And I and, and I, I purposely picked a different race from each one because I don't want to make this just about like black. I don't want to make this white. So we have black, white, and Asian there, right? These women explain why they prefer dating white men. If I date an Asian guy, I feel like I'm dating my relative. I just can't. I've never wanted to, to date another Japanese guy because it reminds me too much of like my own family. Asian girls find white guys attractive. White guys look better because they have like nice eyes. Eyes? Nice hair. Hair? Nice body. They're taller as so. Angie, who's never dated an Asian dude in her whole life. Never. I guess we'll just jump right into it. What kind of guys do you like? Uh, white boys. I agree. I don't think it's going to be a good <laughs> thing to say. Trying, they have smudging. All these Asian women saying that they want to date someone totally different. And, yeah. they're, and they had their preferences. Mm -hmm. And so... So why are men not allowed to have our preferences, but then women are allowed to have their preferences? Exactly. Because if guys were to say that, we're going to be called labeled as, I don't know, maybe misogynistic or, or sexist or, or prejudiced or, 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 or discriminatory. That guy said you were a predator. Yeah, yeah. Said they were a predator. And so look, it's like... So then what about a mixed guy like me? What if I don't want to be uh, Asian or white? I mean, I guess that's bad too. Everybody who's seen the podcast uh -huh. know, what you're, know what you're trying to do. Doing what? What do you mean? You, you know what you're trying to do. You're sitting what there, is that? You're trying to jump in the DMs of Chantel. <laughs> you know what you're doing. No, she's taken, so there's respect. She's taken, so there's respect. There's a respect. Honestly, what, what, I'm, mm -hmm. what I'm saying about this, I'm like, you can be bombastic, you can say this and that. But I, I just look at the whole passport movement as this. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's people's choice one way or the other. If they have the money to go, then they can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So why would you shame somebody for a choice? Because I never hear people shaming women mm -hmm. for the choices. I so that 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 white lady saying all of these men going from the UK. She is literally jealous. That's what I see. That that's the type jealousy. of energy I'm getting out of her. Uh, because okay. the Japanese economy is not really doing too well, but they're not living a lower social economic standard yeah, so, than so, the, from the well, United and States. That's why I picked someone <laughs> from Japan sense. because yeah. the popular, the popular vernacular is that you're taking someone uh -huh. and you're going to. To to just like what this what this idiot said is that you're you're uh, exploiting these young poor folks, right? 
But no, actually, it's just people making choices because those white guys are choosing Japanese women. Grover, she's jealous because she has blonde hair and blue eyes, and she didn't get picked in Japan. Yup. Oh wow. Oh, you know those guys like well, like those Japanese. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna hold it back. <laughs> well, so but but Japanese dudes uh, in general, yeah, yeah, yeah. when I was in Japan, mm -hmm. I seen them going crazy for blonde hair, blue eyes. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, crazy. Yeah, I hear about that. I hear crazy. About that. Oh, so yeah, how, yeah, yeah, you've been there. Yeah, before. yeah, for, for months. So you know. So and how you, how trash is your personality now? Please. No, real, real, real <laughs> quick. Since you've yeah. been there before, yeah. and I think this is actually valuable information because I'm starting thinking about this. Is what regions are Japanese women attracted to white men, and what regions are Japanese women attracted to black men? I don't. I don't know by region. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I went, I seen Japanese women were very friendly to. to for, which okay, so Japanese people in general are polite, mm -hmm. uh, but there were situations where it was obvious that they were very interested in me, and it was situations we had a dude who had a uh, red hair, mm -hmm. right? And we had, he had red hair and uh, green eyes, and they were very interested mm -hmm. in that gentleman. Oh, just, they were. They had a preference. They, for that uh, I will say that they mm -hmm. that gentleman there, and there was a Filipino cat yeah. in, our, in our band with us, who, uh, you know, he was a little taller. He was kind of darker skin. He had like his hair was always whipped. You, you telling me he that guy was the one slaying it back in the states? That guy, but he was getting a goose egg over in Japan. No, no, that Filipino dude was killing it. Oh, he was? in Japan and died in the states. Oh, okay, <laughs> died. All, in right, the all right, all right, all right, all right. It was hella funny because yeah. he because like when we got back, we all had the. United experience that while, wow, like, like I said, it was it wasn't like the primary reason we went there to play, right? Mm -hmm. And then secondary, we went there to see the sights, to see the see the experiences. Third area, we went there for food, right? Because like mm -hmm. Japanese food. Like fourth, in fourth place, we we're like, oh yeah, I win. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that like you could talk about the passport bros and you could say this and that, but like I was having a conversation with the confidence creator in his chat, and I said you have to understand that the majority of people travel for business. And if you say, like, especially African-Americans, the majority of African-Americans have a passport are in the military by nature. They're traveling for business. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think people need to, like, calm it down a little. And if someone has a preference. You mean the ladies got to calm it yeah. down. The lady uh, and this and this guy. The with, ladies got to calm it down. And this guy with the hair and a man purse. Because uh, this is <laughs> why I got to say. Is that for me, the guy that went, has a passport, I've traveled and I travel just to, to see places. The whole passport bro movement mm -hmm. is really uniquely new to me. Yeah. And I found it a little bit strange, strange in a way. I'm just like, oh, I guess these guys just want to go out there and find a relationship of these girls in other countries. Right. And they want women yeah. that are not United States from the United States. But you were saying something to me earlier about the reaction. So I want the you... That's what I'm trying to say oh, okay. is that the women here are very upset that the American men are traveling outside of the country and not picking them here in the United States. Yeah. Which I say it's more for me, but you know, that's how I feel about but, it. But, but it, it doesn't make any sense. Why are the women so outraged well, well, about this? You said their they, outbursts are crazy. They're like almost uh, like like a venomous. But you told nature. me that, you told me that they were so outraged that you were actually like, dang, it kind of makes me want to go see what they're outraged. Yeah, about. like yeah, a little bit. <laughs> because to me, okay, if so a girl's gonna have that kind of attitude. I'm yeah. like, okay, maybe I'll just go check over there in South America or Vietnam or Africa or Middle East. I mean, I don't turn nothing down, but everyone, like, oh, know, everyone, right? Jesus I'm on like a God. visa, bro. Like, you take me anywhere. <laughs> One swipe. <laughs> One swipe. Just like that. One swipe and four pumps. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, look. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, the last thing I have mm -hmm. is because uh, we see a lot of men. Besides uh, mm -hmm. Chantel Simone. We see a lot of men saying, hey, get off the passport, bros. Get off of this. Get off of that. Get off of this. But I came across. What do you mean by get off? Get off, get off, the, get off the passport bros back. Let them do what they oh, want to do. do. You know, what, what are you doing? Yeah. Why, why are you so upset about it? But I came across something that I thought was interesting. So, oh, yeah. But the real quick, also with the Asian preferences thing. Uh -huh. um, oh, yeah. We didn't really touch on that. No, no. You show, like, <laughs> that was like the longest clip. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, as I was growing up, I was definitely attracted to Asian girls and then it switched over to white girls and it switched over. I don't know. I like I literally just don't have a type, really. But I can see where those girls are coming from because I'm naturally attracted to black girls, to Latin girls, to mixed Asian girls, but not fully Asian girls. But it doesn't mean I'm going to like be all of a sudden like, oh, I'm not going to pick her because she's Asian. If she happens to be fine, she has to be feminine, fit, cooperative, friendly. I might be with her. I don't know. So I think these girls are doing themselves a disservice. I think I want to translate this, what you just said okay, to everybody. Yeah. You know, for the Chang dynasty. <laughs> Yo. Anyway, go. <laughs> go. But, but it is kind of strange how, like, females can have this 
discriminatory preference and not get called out on it. But the moment a guy says, oh, like, especially since I'm around the black community right, now, right, right. like you, not you, but just the black men do not want to be with black women. There's this outrage and Whoa. these outbursts that are coming out on yeah. a daily basis. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, you're hearing the whole divester. Look, I mean, look, we even look. had to do a copy thing on yeah, a person. On a, di- on a divester who used our stuff. Yeah. But look, here's the thing. Like, the majority of black men want to be with black women, mm-hmm. right? And I think like there's a very small minority of black black men who like date or marry outside of the race. It's still small. The problem is this: like you got the inside baseball, you got the inside advantage, you got all of the, the secret hand signals, and you're still losing. It's probably because your your personality is not all men. It's just like what Jordan Peterson said: "What all women? You have a problem with all women? It's you. It has to be you. Well, if you have a problem with all men, it has to be you." So now, second thing I want to say is that if you're upset that someone like wants to get a passport and go, I'm gonna tell everybody out there. I mean, get a passport for the cultural aspect of going there, and if you happen to find someone, find them. I mean, don't be lame and just travel only in a world just for women. Mm. That's lame. That means your judgment's so getting clouded. That, that's lame, because you're going to go there with one-itis. Yep. You're going to go there with one-itis, because <laughs> yeah. everything that you see is going to be magnificent to you. Uh, and so so you have to go there understanding, and this is something I always told people. Go mm-hmm. there, go there, like, go, like, you know, go, go. To, like I went a few times travel group with a camaraderie of my friends mm-hmm. and like it's the only time we seen each other was when we were abroad we had a great time we're like we we rented like a mansion you know it was great we had a great times so that's something that you could do like we rented a mansion in uh, Costa Rica when when uh, four of us went down there mm-hmm. so, so that's something so like go for the experience don't go for like only women you know go for the experience go go to be able to see stuff right all right so the last clip I want to say I want to put this up because I think a lot of guys are always like talking about stuff. Well, I'm a little woman. Man, as I already got, I'm Pete. This soft girl, Eritrean, did some bull****. This is the same thing pick me has been telling y'all since day one, which is simply act like a lady. You will get further with men if you are nicer to them. Instead, y'all coined the term unfriendly black hottie and sat around like 30 plus year old men girls calling yourself independent, constantly with your dependent hand out. Y'all fight for y'all right to be masculine and exude the most ugly traits you see in men that you claim to hate. And then you don't demonize women until it comes to a pick me because, of course, if a man is agreeing with you, you must be wrong. Wanting protection from men, but constantly disrespecting them every opportunity you get when they're not behaving how you want them to behave and then the moment they state their purposes they're controlling and misogynistic and of course it's women's empowerment until we don't agree with you then it's name calling and belittling the fake trope about men's accountability when y'all really just want the leverage to act like them socially and not be judged but only when it comes to bad parents and a hypersexuality instead of correcting the behavior we should be able to do it because men do it too even though you know it's wrong and then using men like ATMs but then get mad when they treat you like a prostitute but good luck on y'all soft girl era the pick me's been new so <laughs> she needs like a musical background there, or, uh, or, or a breath, so a beat, or some shit. <laughs> you know, she was <laughs> rapping. <laughs> she, no, but, but like, the reason why I picked that is because this, like that attitude, is like the brothers I know who are just traveling, and the white cats I know who are just traveling, just to meet women. That attitude that she just said is what they cite, mm. and that's why I picked that up. The there. strong, independent woman. Strong, type. independent. You can be but, strong, but non accountability. Yeah. Look, yeah, I don't, that's, that's nobody cares about strong, independent. But what I care about. Is that you're strong and then you're independent, but then you don't want anything that comes with being strong and independent. Mm-hmm. Don't sit here and tell me you're strong and independent, then cry crocodile tears, which I literally had someone do today. Mm-hmm. I had someone do last week to me. Cry crocodile tears about you can't get somebody that you want, but you're strong and independent. Yeah. Well, you want, I want him strong and independent. Why can't I be strong, independent, and have the guy I want who's gonna understand that I'm strong and independent and he's gonna be six foot tall and have, 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 have giraffe dick? And, and, and be the greatest guy in the world and make hella money, but always available, a great sense of humor, but knows when to be serious, emotional, but stoic. He doesn't exist. You can't have it all. And the problem is, is that when you start thinking you can have it all, when you start getting used to fifth place trophies, then you have this situation where you look at someone who says, hey, well, you know what? I know I can't have it all. And I know that this person, this is my lane right here. And I'm going to be happy with him. And I'm going to be okay. I'm going to I'm going to cooperate with him. And then they call him a pick me. And that's the problem with that. So all I gotta say is I have to, if I ever deal with someone with a strong, independent woman attitude with masculine energy and also not having accountability and getting upset with the double standards in society, which men are afflicted by all the time, yeah. I'm not gonna date them. Yeah. I just won't, I won't deal with them. Like right. I'll be like, I mean, I'm, I'm like, deal with them. <laughs> 
<laughs> but like uh, as a long-term relationship until they adjust their attitude yeah because their attitude determines their altitude and if their attitude's a bad attitude what's the point of getting a relationship yeah. i don't want more headaches absolutely i don't want to waste my resources and i don't no, want to waste my time. time absolutely exactly. so look look so passport bros if that's what you feel like you need to do then do your thing mm-hmm. do your thing do your thing do i think it's the only solution in life no mm-hmm. but i'm i'm no i'm an old man and I'm not out there with you folks, with the young folks. Mm-hmm. I'm already off the market. It's already done. Mm-hmm. So do I think, fine. But listen, if it's not, and you feel like you got to go get your passport, don't let anybody uh, deter you. But what I will say is that don't have that be the only reason why you go see the greatest places that this world has. Mm-hmm. Because you'll miss a lot if your eyes are just focused on the booty. Yeah, yeah. And if you're only focused on the booty, then you're really not focused on your purpose. Yeah. You're not focused on the purpose. You start looking at the females. The females get you in bad situations. You know, Absolutely. You don't want to get in bad Absolutely. situations. So, so, so I think there's only one thing to do. Join the tip tube right here. That's right. Let's give it, a it, shout it's, out. It's on you. you what did we got? It, we got a new tip tube member today. So new tip tube All member. Right. I didn't get to rehearse a name yeah, because yeah, it's man. a long name. It's a long name. Over. It's a foreign name. Oh, my goodness. All right. So listen, if you're on the tip tube. Especially the new guy who we didn't rehearse the name. And we're horrible at names here. What I need you to do is hit us at THPP Network at any social media outlet. So that's going to be at, at uh, TikTok, Facebook, or Instagram. And we're going to send you a personal greeting. We're going to put you in a group and you're going to get all of, all of the uh, videos first. You know, like when we publish it, I get it and I drop it to you first. Right? You don't even have to worry about it. You get shorts. If we have something special and we're, if we're working on a new live stream, I'll, I'll give you a little hint about it. Okay? Thank you very much for joining the tip two. It's $1.99 a month. It's less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. I know all of you folks get your coffee in the morning. You sit there, you get your pumpkin spice lattes or or whatever you're drinking. Uh, so go on and uh, join the tip two, and we appreciate you. Yeah, and we're going to shout out DM. We're going to shout out Ray Sean, Lisa Blossom Cakes Redfield, Omega yeah. Supreme with Cheese. And, and I'm going to say the name right here. Shout out to Shagar Wukong Shah. Welcome to Tip Tube. Welcome to the Plight Savages. Shagar Wukong Shah. Okay, I said it. And also, it's editing, the secrets of editing, right? <laughs> so also follow us on social media networks. Did you say that already? I no? said it already. Okay, you said it already. Uh, and where can they follow you, you at? You can follow me at the gram at I am Gorilla One. You can follow me at Scott. Dot T-I-E-E. Three E's. Three E's. Yep, Don't yep. drop the E's. Don't drop the E. And then what about Patreon? Uh, Patreon, we got two Patreon members. We got Miss Rojas and we got DM. We're about to hit Patreon up next week. You're going to have a lot of stuff because we got to get rid of good or off people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, and there's only one thing left to do. We did all this talking, but we still got to ask yourself one question. Just one question. And what's that? Which country are you going to next? Hey, can, can you handle the tip? Boom. Booty in your face. We're out. All right. You're done. This is the Happiness Podcast. I'm Grover. Oh, yeah, it's my turn. I'm Scotty. This motherfucker right here, boy. <laughs> Leave your comments and like and subscribe on YouTube. Booty in your face. <laughs> we found true happiness.